the question is, uh, they said, hey, Jimbo, can you tell me or tell us what it means when something is a solvent-based as opposed to water-based? Water is obvious, but what is considered a solvent? Can you come? Can it come in different forms? Why is water-based better, or at least in my opinion? I know that to not just apply to this particular type of product, which was a ceramic spray, uh, but a whole bunch of other detailing items would love to understand this thoroughly. So with that, I will say I am not a chemist at all. I don't even pretend to be a chemist. I've Actually, science is my worst subject and was my worst subject in school. Um, I don't pretend to have a PhD in molecular sciences, chemistry, or any of that. What I do have is a deep, deep, deep uh, desire to learn these types of things. And the benefit is, <clears throat> is that I currently and have worked directly with a chemist who is incredibly smart and been incredibly uh, gracious of his time and his knowledge to, you know, help me understand some of these things. And so I put some notes together and I'm sure this will not be a full and complete uh, breakdown of it. I'm sure there's going to be gaps in it. I'm sure there's going to be inconsistencies in what I'm going to explain or try to explain. But it is, to the best of my knowledge, what I've been told by people that are way smarter than me and have done this for longer than I've been alive and play in that arena of other chemists and stuff like that. And so I, I'll give you a great example. I will go to I call him my friend, but he is a, you know, chemist. And so I will go to him, <clears throat> I will go to him and say, "Hey, I really and this is a real world example. When Adam's spray ceramic was coming out, I said, "Hey, I really think it'd be cool to design a product like this, but I don't like that it smells so bad. I don't like that it stinks up my whole shop." Same with the 303 Aerospace and, you know, I don't like that. I I, I use it and I feel like I'm dying as I use it, you know, is there any way to make it not like that? And he'd be like, well, that's the solvent that you're smelling. And, and the reason why they use solvents is it's easier to mix things into that blend and they, they don't become separated. So they use solvents to do that. And so in order to do that same thing and get the same durability with a water-based chemical, or a water-based product is a lot more difficult. And that's why in the early days, you saw um, people uh, put it in bottles that aren't clear, right? And then because I wanted a clear liquid as well. So because I was private labeling at the time a lot. And so I wanted to make all my samples clear with no scent um, because <clears throat> that way I could let the client decide what they wanted. So I wanted a water-based product that was clear uh, ceramic spray. Uh, with no scent, which was incredibly hard to do as a water-based product and had actually never been done before. And so one little thing to mention is that a lot of times uh, with colors and with scents and fragrances and stuff in detailing products, they are in there uh, first and foremost to hide what the chemicals are actually doing. So maybe they're separating, maybe you're getting chunks in your product and colors and scents are there to hide that. Scents obviously more to hide kind of the nasty smells of some of these things that are mixed in to make a product. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes color is there to hide any separation that may come, right? So uh, let's break it down and I'll start stop riffing and go back to my notes. So, you know, first off, what is a solvent? You know, uh, what does that mean solvent? So in simple terms, a solvent is any liquid that dissolves other substances. So in detailing, we're talking about the base that carries the active ingredients of a product. It's what allows the product to spread evenly and to do its job, right? So for water-based products, the solvent is water. In solvent-based products, the solvent can be chemicals like alcohol, acetone, petroleum-based substances, and they come in many forms depending on depending upon the product's purpose. So <clears throat> again, whether you're doing interior, exterior, um, it, it could be all different. Um, and this is where product products can really uh, change depending upon brand and manufacturer because <clears throat> as I've seen it with like the Super Soaper for instance, we went back and forth on the solvent in that product a little bit, the carrier, the, the thing that dissolves other substances. 
and you can get very different reactions and you can get very different results using like a petroleum based substance, right? Than you do with an acetone or with an alcohol. And sometimes you have to bounce between those three or four or five different bases depending upon the results that you're getting. So let me give you another or an example with the super soaper. Um, we tried both with alcohol as a base and then acetone as a base. And, you know, sometimes you'll get, oh, I don't really like that acetone smell. And it's like, oh, okay, if you don't like the acetone smell, but you like the results that you're getting from the acetone, is there something that we can do to kind of mute that acetone scent, right? Um, sometimes the solvent base will actually eat at the scents uh, that you put into the formula. So, hey, we can't use acetone. We got to use more of an alcohol base because the acetone is actually eating at the fragrance and or it doesn't mix well with that fragrance or it doesn't mix well with that fragrance and color or. And so <clears throat> that's where, you know, having a really good solid chemist on your side, especially if you're trying to develop, you know, new products like the super soaper or even tough as shell, um, uh, my, the complete cabin cleaner that I've been developing. Uh, you know, we're looking at different, you, you can look at different bases to, uh, depending upon what kind of result that you're wanting. So why does it matter if something is water-based or solvent-based? Um, and really what it comes down to is helping you know how aggressive or gentle it's going to be on the surface and yourself, by the way. So water-based products are typically more gentle and versatile, which, and typically less durable. So that's a big one. And that's why we saw a lot of those Adams or 303 or whatever, when they're coming out with the ceramic sprays in solvent-based. One, it's much easier to create a formula that is like that. Two, you can almost be guaranteed it's going to be probably more durable. That's why everyone says, oh, wipe on ceramic is so much more durable than a spray. Yes, because it's there's a higher potency of raw materials in that, and it's heavily solvent, right? So you can mix in more uh, good stuff when you have a higher concentration of the base. Again, that sounds a little maybe possibly wrong, but that is my understanding of it. Um, so water-based are also easier to clean up. Um, so it's a great option for both you know DIY and pro detailers. Um, and they're often preferred products for interior cleaners, dressings, protectants, because they won't leave a heavy residue and they don't risk damaging sensitive materials. So this is where, you know... This is where things get really sideways sometimes in the detailing space and that term user error comes in and sometimes it's not user error. Sometimes it's actually the formula that is messing things up and the end user doesn't know it. Sometimes the brand doesn't even know it because they're too far removed from the chemist. And so they don't know that their, uh, you know, solvent based ceramic spray probably isn't even the best around trim because it kind of oxidizes trim out. Or it is really good around trim because it actually feeds the trim a little bit more. And so, but again, it, it there's endless amounts of ways that you can kind of blend these things together. So a solvent-based product on the flip side, they usually less more so, but traditionally punk, uh, pack more of a punch. They're often used when you need a stronger cleaning power, more durability, um, like when you're dealing with heavy grime, grease, contaminants, you know, the best remover for, you know, uh, sap and tar is actually just straight gasoline, right? And so when you need stronger cleaning power, you're probably going to go a stronger solvent. You'll commonly find solvent-based products and things like degreasers, wheel cleaners, um, coatings, waxes, like I talked about. Um, but here's the catch. Solvent-based products can be harsher, not just on the surfaces, but also on the environment, on you. Um, they could strip away waxes and sealants, and sometimes they can leave residue. We, we know that, right? If not properly kind of cleaned off. So I don't love solvent-based products for those reasons. I, I really like to consider my own health and safety, the health and safety of my customers that are buying things like the Jimbo's Detailing products. Um, and I know this is really not like a sexy topic to talk about of solvent and water base, but it's actually something that doesn't get enough press, doesn't get talked enough about, and is uh, uh, at the forefront, at least for me and my product brand, of I want to make sure that I'm making 
um, you know, products that not only work, but that are safe to use, safer to be around. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we are cleaning dirty stuff. And so sometimes you do have to use harsher stuff. It's just the reality of it. But a perfect example is like the interior cleaner that I'm working on, the complete cabin cleaner that's launching soon or may even be launched uh, by the time you're listening to this. You know, I looked at different surfactants that we could use in it to make it less harmful because you're breathing all that stuff in. So if there's a new surfactant that'll break down dirt and grime quicker and be safer for you, that's the route I want to go. I also want something that's pH neutral for the inside. So it's safer on more sensitive areas, right? There's no sense in using an all-purpose cleaner on the interior of your car. You you are, you know, breaking down the materials inside your car by doing that. And here's an, here's an example. I had a customer come in. They had a newer Mercedes. I think it was two years old. And the steering wheel had been completely worn out. And I'm like, wow, that seems like what happened. Your, steering, your car's new. How did the steering wheel get worn out like that? And he said, well, in the early COVID days, I was wiping down the steering wheel all the time with one of those disinfecting wipes. Well, those disinfecting wipes are high in alcohol, right? High in solvent. So it broke down the material prematurely. I don't want that in an interior cleaner. And that's what sometimes an all-purpose cleaner can do. Uh, And so I didn't want that. So let's talk about the pros and cons a little bit more before I get too more off topic, starting with the water base. So water-based products are generally safer for most services, including plastics, rubber, and fabrics. They're easier to clean up both on the car, off your tools, off your hands, right? Generally, they're more eco-friendly, less harmful to the environment and you as the user, And they usually don't leave a greasy residue or high shine, um, which is great if you're going for a matte finish, like interior detailing. I will say there are things that you can add. The all dressed up is a water-based tire dressing, uh, not a solvent-based tire dressing. And usually there is solvents in the dressing. It's just not the main base, right? So the cons of water-based products are they're less aggressive, uh, traditionally, not always, there are, you know, there's new developments coming all the time and how we can do this and make them equally as aggressive. Uh, So sometimes they could struggle with really tough contaminants, grease, tar, heavy brake dust, um, uh, sap, stuff like that. And they may not last as long in outdoor condition compared to solvent-based products, especially in terms of durability. But again, those are that is really changing and it goes back to uh, and I think we're moving into this era of products that are just easier to use and use them more often right and so even if they're not as durable they are um, you know easier to use less streaky things like that so when it comes to solvent based products the pros are that you get that stronger cleaning and dissolving power for tough contaminants right the example I used one of my favorite Uh, tree sap removal products is just gasoline, right? It works really, really well. Uh, They often last longer, especially in dressing or coatings uh, that withstand harsher conditions. We see that in real life with wipe-on ceramic coatings, something like the Gloss Boss. Um, They're ideal for heavy-duty cleaning jobs where you need that extra bit of punch to break down grease or road grime, really specifically those two things. Uh, The cons are it can be more hazardous to the user, you, and the environment. Uh, You know, stronger fumes, harsher chemicals, uh, potentially damaging to sensitive surfaces. Rubber could dry it out. Uh, Certain plastics, if overused, and that's where sometimes we don't see it with detailing chemicals right away, but we see it in the future of like, oh, why did this happen? It's like, oh, dried it out. Wow, that's crazy. It dried it out. I've been using it for a year, you know, and I thought everything was all good, and now it's all dried out. And so, there's, you know, as a brand owner, that's a lot more difficult to, um, you know, uh, describe that or prove that to someone, but it is something that does happen more times than you would think. Uh, and they may require more caution during application, especially if you're detailing in confined space and using them on delicate finishes. Again, the Adam Spray Ceramic, the 303 are just two that come to mind that are heavy solvent based, and it's just very annoying. It, it, the fumes are, you know, bad. So I've always been a big fan of water-based products. And, you know, when you're working on a customer's car, even your own, 
you want products that are safe, effective, and easy to use. So with water-based products, uh, I know I'm reducing the risk of damaging any surfaces, um, like I talked about. And another reason is cleanup. Water-based products are just easier to deal with. So whether that's washing out my hands at the end of the day, cleaning up spills, and especially in today's world, depending upon where you live in the world, being more you know environmentally conscious is important. And water-based solutions are generally a lot less harmful to both the user and the environment around us. You know, that said, there are definitely situations where solvent-based products are the better option. For example, like I've talked about, you know, thick grease buildup, uh, uh, sap, tar. Um, if you're looking for a super, super high gloss tire dressing, a uh, client that just really wants that wet look, a solvent-based tire dressing might last longer, might last through, you know, a light rainstorm. But it's really all about knowing what the job requires, and then choosing the right products for that situation. And in the end, both water-based and solvent-based products have their place in detailing, and neither is inherently better than the other. It just is. It just depends on the job that you're doing. And if you're looking for versatility, safety, and easy use, water-based products are going to be your go-to, right? Uh, But when you need heavy-duty cleaning power, uh, long-lasting durability, that's when you reach for the solvent-based products. If you want the ultimate protection, you're reaching for a small bottle wipe-on ceramic coating like the Gloss Boss. You're not reaching for a ceramic spray if you want the ultimate durability, right? So I hope this gives you a thorough understanding of the differences, pros, cons, whether you're just starting out or a seasoned pro. You know, Knowing when to use each type of product will really help you get better results and take your game, your detailing game, to the next level. So I hope that helps you guys a little bit. I appreciate you listening. Appreciate you uh, following along. And of course, if you want to check out the Jimbo's Detailing line of products, you can go to jimbosdetailing.com. 